This conversation is brought to you in part by Calavo Growers, the family of fresh. Ho, 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 everybody. What is up? Happy December. Happy holidays. Happy whatever your family and you celebrate. I hope it's epic as always. I hope every day is epic in your life. I am pumped today. I got a little early Christmas gift for all of you. I have a friend of mine here to hang out with me that's going to inspire and enlighten and tell you some cool stuff and get you fired up about the work that she's doing, the different things. I'm a big fan of this individual. She's come into my life and has made a big difference, puts a smile on my face every time I talk to her. The family loves her. She's a baller out there. She's doing some great things. Give it up for the founder and the CEO of Volcano Purse. Give it up for my friend, Tony. She's in the house. What up, girl? Hey, Todd. How's it going today? Well, how's it sound like? It sounds like I'm on meth right now. I'm fucking, it's going great. It's the holidays. I'm fantastic. Well, as they say in Hawaii, mele kiliki maka. Merry no Christmas. doubt about it. Merry Christmas back at you. I appreciate that. You know, it's, it's right. Exactly. I'm drinking tea. You're not, but I'm drinking tea. You know, you know why I'm drinking tea? Why? My, instru- my, my instrument is, is sore. My throat. I have a little bit of a little bit of a scratchy throat. I kind of feel like a, I kind of feel like I'm smoking a couple packs of Paul Malls and drinking <laughs> like really bad coffee right now or something. I don't even know. Um, but fortunately yeah. I look good. I look good. I sound rough, but I look good. But welcome. I'm super stoked you're here. I'm, I'm just such a fan of who you are as a person and what you're doing and what you're out accomplishing in the world today. I'm thrilled to have you come in here and talk about what Volcano's doing because you all are erupting with freshness, which I just freaking love that. <laughs> right. And, and the new things and exciting things are happening for you. So I'm thrilled to have you hang out with me. I do appreciate you being here and, and uh, we're going to have fun today. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So before we get started, I do this with every guest. When I started this broadcast, I used to read people's bios. And some of these, I, I just, I stopped because some of these bios are like five pages long. I'm like, oh shit, this is the whole show. So I gave up on that. So now I have everybody kind of introduce themselves a little bit and give, give their bio and what they're up to. Cause I, I think it's just so more, more genuine when it comes from your heart. So if you wouldn't mind, tell everybody who the hell you are and how I roped you into hanging out with me this fine holiday season. Absolutely. Well, I'm Tony Radosta. I grew up in Southern California. My father has been in the produce industry for, geez. 50 plus years. And then going back actually is generations. I, produce DNA runs in my blood. It does. Yeah. What can I say? You know, volcano produce. I mean, Hawaii, it's all about Hawaii, us going to the islands for vacations, watching my dad grow his business. Um, it means, it means the world to me. I, I've been doing that. Gosh, since I was a little girl. Yeah. Run around in the fields with my dad and his papaya fields and watch him do his his thing and bullshit with people. I mean, that's that's what my dad did. I admired him for it. And now that's what I'm doing. I'm trying your to dad was, yeah. myself, you know. Well, your so, dad was a baller. I mean, I can remember I can remember your old man when I was cutting my teeth, you know, on the street down in Los Angeles a hundred thousand years ago. Back back in those days, you know, it was covered wagons. Oh, they brought yeah, the they brought the papayas much. from Hawaii and covered wagons back then. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, no, but but your dad, you know, to, to your point, I love it. And that's what I love about your story. That's what I love about your passion, because when when passion is something that you find in an early age, right, that source of inspiration, that path that your passion takes you on, and you've been cultivating it since your point, like as you've been a little girl, and now here you are matured and grown and running your own business. I mean, it just, it reeks out of you and it's just exciting and infectious to be around. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about your trajectory. I interrupted you, which I shouldn't do. Were you done telling your bio? Did I kind of fuck that up or no? We good? You didn't fuck it up. We can keep going. Okay. Cool. Well, I was excited. I mean, I'm just, I'm pumped you're here. I'm excited. I, I was looking forward to this all day today. It was like, all right, we're going to have fun today. We're going to have fun today. So let's talk a little bit. Let's, let's give everybody, you know, tell everybody what, you know, before we dive into the past a little bit and talking about your old man and what he was, I think it'd be perfect for everybody to kind of, and I'm blocking the logo. Thank God you got it behind you. I'll step out of the way, but tell everybody a little bit about what is volcano produce. Volcano is my heart. It means, means the world to me, family, trust, loyalty, Watching yeah. it, watching it grow right now. Yeah. 
it, uh, this is me. I am yeah. the heart, I am the heart of this business, and I want to emulate that to everyone I work with, including my employees. And my it's they're not employees to me. This is family, and I want to watch this grow and become even more successful than what I've already done, and and just continue on this path. Just being me, who I am, the Aloha spirit. It's it's everything to me. It's infectious. I told you, everybody. I told you this was her good. I knew this was coming. I knew that this was who this person is <laughs> and her heart. And that's why I'm so happy to be sharing this message with everybody because you are such a special person. This is so important to you because as we talked about, it started as a little kid, you know, and, and, and your dad, as I talked about, has done some big stuff. He's been a big integral part of, of changing food in this country, you know, one papaya at a time. But nonetheless, he's been, but I mean, it's the truth, right? He's been a part of that. He's been a part of, of Southern California, how it started, where it is, the transformation of it, the whole nine yards. And it's powerful. And like I said, it's in your DNA. As you said, it's in your DNA. It's in your bloodstream. Like I had said, I mean, it's just super, super, super cool. So let's talk a little bit about your dad because, you know, you were influenced at an early age. You know, you're running around the islands. He's over there doing his business. He's growing stuff. He's making it happen, bringing it back to the mainland, doing this whole nine yards, you know, and that, that, there was a lot that you saw. There was a lot of influences there, you know, especially listening, right? I think that's something that goes sometimes experiences when we're younger about an action. I think sometimes experience when you're younger is about listening too, right? That's a skill that I wish I worked. I wish I had better when I was a kid. One, I tried to install in my kids, which absolutely didn't work, but nonetheless, I tried. <laughs> no, teasing. But so talk a little bit about your dad's influence, you know, on your path. Gosh, my dad. Well, first of all, he's Sicilian. Um, there you go. Enough said nothing. there. There you go. Uh, just his, my dad's work ethic. He, man, he grinded it out every day, all day, seven days a week. I mean, he'd answer the phone in the middle of the night. And back then there were no cell phones. There wasn't any computer. No. You know, you travel, we got to the islands and then we'd be picking up, he'd be picking up the phone in the condo, you know, answering business calls. I mean, he was just nonstop, wanted to grow his business and provide for his family. I mean, he was just always on point with everything, you know, de I'm dealing with, with, you know, problems, you know, after problems, you know, I used to see my dad on the phone, you know, old school produce guy, you pick him up the phone, you know, F you hang up the phone. And then oh, yeah. my dad was no bullshit. He's just yeah. no bullshit and he never took it from anybody and he, he grew his business and, you know, I'm, I, I just look up to him. He just, I admire my dad and he inspired me and I always knew I wanted to do something uh, entrepreneurial wise, but I didn't know what until I got to college and that's when I figured all that out. But well, my, dad, my dad was a big piece of, of that for sure. hundred percent. Well, there's no doubt. And I love, I love the fact that you can recall back to when, the old man, the phone's ringing because, you know, that's was my life too. Like the phone, I mean, the phone ring one thirty in the morning and you got some oh, truck yeah. driver stuck at the border in Florida with no snail inspection, solve my problem. Like, dude, it's one thirty in the morning. I mean, there's, there's no problem for me to solve at this time in the morning, right. you know, but I mean, oh my God, I can remember all that too. It's like, ah, oh, I don't miss those days. Thank God for cell phones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for email and cell phones. So, you know, you, you talked a little bit about getting to college and stuff and, and recognizing like, you know, Hey, I want to run my own business. I want to own my own business. I want to build a business. Right. And I think that there's, that's an interesting perspective because, you know, owning a business is one thing, running a business is another and building business is another. It's like, I want to go run a business. Like, yeah, that doesn't work that way. It's just not that simple. It's like you walk in and it runs itself, right? You got to build it. You got to take responsibility for it. You got to nurture it to your point early. You got to love it. You yeah. know, you got to find that passion to, you know, for you to answer the phone at one thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, you, you talked a little bit about recognizing it, you know, when you're in college, but obviously it touched you much earlier in that, as far as planting that seed. And I'm a big believer in we walk a path, right. And, and that path was being dictated to you as a young child. So talk to me a little bit when you did realize you wanted to own run and build a business, what that experience was like. Thanks for joining the Todd Versation. And now a word from our sponsor. 
Hello, this is Jesse from Superior Fresh. Check us out at www.superiorfresh.com to learn more about how we raise our Atlantic salmon without the use of hormones, antibiotics, or pesticides. Our Heart Check Certified salmon boasts two times the omega-3s of other salmon and are fed an organic and non-GMO diet. Our fish thrive in water naturally filtered by our USDA certified organic greens, which allows us to recycle 99.9% of our water. This is salmon as it should be. Order Superior Fresh Salmon direct to your home by shopping with us online. And listeners of this episode can use the discount code TLC15 to receive 15% off your order. We make it easy to get the best salmon in your homes and on your plates. We've got you covered. Superior salmon equals superior taste. Shop now and use code TLC15 for 15% off through the end of the month. You know, I probably was maybe 10 or 11 years old and I just I continued to see my dad build his business and deal with things. And, you know, there were other people in my family that may have worked for other others you know, and and I just, I just knew I wasn't that type. I didn't want to be, (laughs) I didn't want to be told what to do. I wanted to have my own canvas. I wanted to have my own picture. I wanted to have my own dreams. I didn't want to have a glass ceiling over my head. I wanted to build it. I wanted to do it my way. I want to treat people a certain way. And that's, that's, that's what, where I was when I was younger. And that's, you know, I got to college and then, you know, as you know, my fugly fruits project is there. Yeah. It is. There it is. I, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm going to dive in deeper to the fugly fruit thing too because I think it's just it's it's one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time, and it's so fun to be a part of. It's so fun to watch its trajectory and what your plans are with it, which is exciting. And we're going to get into that in more detail. But I, I want to stay on the train a little bit and build up the why of you, right? Which is what I which was what I find to be just incredible to be around, like, you know, that spirit that you have inside of you. And we both have common paths because we both, you know, you more than me, but we both have spent time in the islands in a long extended period of time because my dad lived over there. You were over there all the time. So I got, I know we were kindred spirits when it comes to that, which is why I'm repping a little Ren Spooner retro Hawaiian shirt for the holidays, by the way. But, you know, how much, and and, and people, I'm going to back up for a second before I throw the question. A lot of people think about the here, you know, the Hawaiian spirit and Aloha and this and that. And it's, unless you've been there, unless you've been a part of it, unless you've actually kind of felt it in that moment, it's hard to really describe to people because it's kind of like, oh, right. It's like, you know, a high five. It's like, no, there's something about that place that is incredibly connected to people. And I don't know if it's just because of the islands itself. It's, you know, if, if it's the spirit of the island, it's mother nature, it's connect, whatever it is, but there's something about that place. that's a little bit magical that touches everybody in some way or another. It just always has. So I want to really ask you, and I want you to, you know, my, my, my dive question on this is, is how much does that Hawaiian spirit influence you as a leader today? Because, you know, you talked about that a little bit, and I want to dive into that a little bit more because I think it's powerful. It influences me a hundred percent. It's, for me, it's the Aloha spirit. It's how you, you know, when I go to the islands, it's, it's the people, it's the land, it's the scenery, it's, it's everything combined. So I come back home here to California. Of course, I want to go back there, but, and it, it, it's a part of me that lives right. in me. That's, that's my Zen. That's how I interact with people. It's about, it's about love. It's about including everybody. It's about respect it's about it's it's about growing together it's about family i mean it, it's it's aloha aloha means a plethora of things i mean yeah. it's, it's a lot but it's all encompassing because it's just it's a it's beautiful that's just it the islands are beautiful the people are beautiful the spirit is beautiful that's the, what most attracts me it's the spirit it's the feeling yeah. it's what you bring back from hawaii Right. You hold on to that. You hold on to it's close to your heart. Yeah. No. Well, I think it's you're hundred percent spot on, which is why I wanted that question to come out because I think it's important. You know, yeah. and one of the things that I love about what you're doing is how much passion you have every single day. Right. How you, I mean, you wake up in the morning and it's like, put the seatbelt on. I'm strapping myself into my chair. Here we go. Passion leads the way. 
you know, doing right by people leads the way. That spirit constantly leads the way, which is why I just love what your brand is about and the things you represent and the product you're putting out in the marketplace today. It's pretty damn cool to say the least. And, and I think that that when you come from a place as a leader and somebody trying to build, you know, own, run and build a business and you come from a place of the heart, right, where that leads you, I just think you have an, you, you attract, a, you know, you attract a lot of good people around you and you, and you, you know, you lift up a lot of spirits. And I think it's just really powerful. So I commend you for leading with that and that being, you know, on that church lead, uh, you know, every single day. I think it's pretty cool. I do. But I got to ask a couple of questions because they're like, I know what Hawaii was like in the egg business a couple of years ago. And you know where I'm going with this because I asked you if I could ask this question. I got to. Sure, you, you can. I, but, you know, Hawaii was a little bit like Wild Wild West back in the day. I mean, it still is a little bit that way, too. There's always that, you know, there is that pirate spirit. There is a little bit of that. There is a little bit of that whole vibe going on in some ways. So you got to tell the story real quick about, you know, being with the old man out in the fields. And you got a whole you got a bunch of guys growing pot out there in the field. And it's like going to be a showdown at the OK Corral because they're not going anywhere and they don't give a shit that you grow papayas. But tell that story a little bit about how that worked out, because it's 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 kind of a classic, you know, whether you like it or not, it's a good story. No, absolutely. Uh, well, when my dad first started growing his papayas over on the Hilo side, you know, the locals, obviously, that that's their land, you know. So he started his operation over there. And they start getting pissed off. They're like, hey, man, this is our turf. This is what we're doing here. And my dad's like, okay, but this is what I'm doing here. Anyway, fast forward just a little bit. They kind of went head to head a little bit. But my dad still was looking the other way. And he just finally sat them down. I was like, hey, I don't care what you guys do. You guys are going to do what you're going to do. And I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And we're just both going to be successful and respect each other's ways. And that was it. And ever since then, they were buddies and even this group this group threw my family a traditional hawaiian luau over at my dad's packing shed on the hilo side it was the coolest thing ever i think i was probably eight nine years old i mean you know they did the whole pig in the ground and everything like total tradition i mean it was it was really cool and my dad made peace with them and it's just it's all about respecting each other you know yeah. he respected them they respected him and they met in the middle there was nothing there's nothing wrong with it. You know, they're no. doing what they have to do to survive. My dad's doing what he he was doing to put money on the table for his family. So I didn't see, you know, of course it was illegal back then, but still there's nothing that's that that's what they were doing. All right. Well, you're going to, you weren't going to stop it, but I, the, 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 the purpose of the story that I, I love is that you lead into the word and, and I knew where you're going, which is about respect, right? Which yeah. is something that in a lot of ways we're lacking today respect oh, and civility in a big way we're lacking that today in this country it's something that we could we could do a better job on mm -hmm. right no matter no matter what you, you don't have to agree with somebody but respect that person for their opinion learn from their opinion listen to their opinion maybe it changes yours maybe it doesn't maybe it reinforces what you believe maybe, i don't know but respect is such a key part of things um, which i think is part of the island thing as well respect your elders right mm -hmm. i mean it's no different than what what native americans do it's all about that tradition it's all about that that hierarchy of, you know, if you're down, you know, you're a kid down here, this is where you're going to learn about the world up here with the elders. And it's so important. Right. I think respect is, is a lost word culturally right now, but in a lot of ways it's lost and sometimes in businesses as well. No, I, I completely agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I got, so let's get into the, one of the topics that I, I'm excited about. I mean, you know, you guys are doing a lot of different things. I mean, you're doing, you know, all kinds of different commodities and all over the place. You got exotics and you got stuff from the greenhouse and field grown. I mean, you got a plethora of stuff. We're not, we're not going to ramble off the whole laundry list of stuff on here. But one of the things that I think is just brilliant and I'm a big fan of is what you call fugly fruit, F-U-G-L-I. Um, it's Sarah, a little bit about how fugly came about, um, what it's all about, and then we'll move on from there but i think it's just a great story ugly fruits the fun ugly fruits that came from my college years it was a it was a marketing project i had to come up with and actually at that point in my life i still wasn't sure what kind of business i wanted to go into and the reason i ended up going into produce well obvious obvious reasons it runs in my blood right sure 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 number two while I was in college, I was trying to think of an industry that, you know, during downtimes, it's still, we're still going to come out on top. Well, everybody has to eat, right? 
Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And so I started doing my research. I started going into the grocery stores. I started looking at the specialty items, dragon fruit, cherimoya, passion fruit. Um, started asking, you know, the produce managers questions. Um, why, why are you guys buying this stuff? I just, I constantly see it sitting on the shelf, rotting, and then you guys throwing it away. Their answer to me was, well, we have to. Okay, you have to. Why, why do you have to? Well, because the people up above us tell us we have to put it right. in the now somebody that one person asked for it, so you get 24 of them. Right. Well, that answer wasn't good enough for me. You know, well, if right. you have to put it in the stores and it's gonna sit here and rot on the shelf, then what's the point? Okay. Yeah. Hence, I'm like, why are these fruits sitting here on the shelves and no one's buying them? It's because number one, nobody knew what they are, what they're used for. Number two, a lot of these specialty items, they actually look rotten when they're ripe. A pack right. looks rotten. Um, uh, a cherimoya looks rotten, right? It starts uh, to dragon, turn. Dragon fruit, not so much, but it's a scary looking, you know, uh, it just doesn't yeah. look inviting, I should say. Right. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's how I came up with the, the fugly fruits. I wanted to educate people, make it not scary, um, make it fun inviting you know for them to go and try different recipes i mean that that's where it all came from it just I mean, honestly me sitting in a marketing class in 2002 at sc that's that's what i came up with and that's that's right fight on I don't. <laughs> so that's that's where it came from i'm that's one of my biggest loves is the fugly fruits um i'm finally starting to get to uh put it out there it just wasn't back then it wasn't the right time i, I you know, wasn't in the position to do that. But, you know, fast forward to now, now the timing is right. Now I am going to start getting it out there. Now people are going to start being rekindling it. it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. Well, I, I, it's, it's brilliant. And the strategy behind it, the marketing you have behind it, the whole, the, 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 the characters, the whole nine yards are great. But, you know, you brought up something I, I want to talk about a little bit, and it's, 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 I always love to talk about the consumption. How do we increase consumption, right? I, I come from a mindset of like, let's just get people to eat an apple. And then my ultimate job is to get them to eat the organic one, right? So first and foremost, eat the apple and then, you know, go secondary. Um, and one of the cool things about what you're trying to do is to your point, a passion fruit is amazing if you've ever eaten one. But if you really saw one ripe, to your point, it's shrivelly. It looks like it's dead. It's like, you know, cherimoy is another one. If you've ever eaten a really good cherimoy, they're amazing. It's like custard. It's crazy. But they look like shit, too. They get kind of black and they just kind of change. And, you know, they, 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 it all, to your point, it's kind of fugly. And um, I think that the opportunity that you've created to help drive consumption with these and by being able to go back to retailers, and you know, which is what your strategy is and be working with people to try to drive this messaging is absolutely amazing because this is really good fruit and this is fruit that kids will eat. Mm -hmm. And if we could figure out a way to, to, to work at retail, to educate these kids, in my opinion, because I'm such a big children's nutrition pusher, um, you know, God, maybe it ends up in schools, right? Maybe dragon fruit ends up in schools and, and things like this start to progress. And so I commend you a on, you know, however you came across this project, I'm sure it's probably after, you know, binge or something, you went to Tommy's and got a burger and thought, Oh, let's come up with this, whatever. But and I, I want to come back around and like I said earlier, but I want to talk about why you feel so passionate about driving the consumption in these categories. And, and because to your point, you buy, you know, one customer wants one and they throw away 23 is not a really good strategy to help reduce food waste and drive consumption. So touch on that a little bit, if you would. Thanks for joining the Todd Versation. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello, this is Jesse from Superior Fresh. Check us out at www.superiorfresh.com to learn more about how we raise our Atlantic salmon without the use of hormones, antibiotics, or pesticides. Our Heart Check certified salmon boasts two times the omega-3s of other salmon and are fed an organic and non-GMO diet. Our fish thrive in water naturally filtered by our USDA certified organic greens, which allows us to recycle 99.9% .9 of our water. This is salmon as it should be. Order Superior Fresh Salmon direct to your home by shopping with us online. And listeners of this episode can use the discount code TLC15 to receive 15% off your order. We make it easy to get the best salmon in your homes and on your plates. We've got you covered. Superior Salmon equals superior taste. Shop now and use code TLC15 for 15% off through the end of the month.
it matters because why should we throw anything away here at all? That it's, it's simple to me. If you see things in the grocery stores getting thrown out, whether it's a cherimoya or an apple, I mean, that's just, that's not who as a country we want, we want to be, right? We're, we're not wasteful people. So why not educate people on what these, you know, fruits and vegetables are and how to use them so we don't waste these. Awesome and it's good fruit. It's good fruit exactly. too. Exactly. <laughs> Dragon fruit is awesome. Cherimoyes are awesome. There's so many things you, you can, you know, make smoothies or cocktails or, you know, you know, cook with them. I mean, there's just so many different things. Like why throw them away? There's no reason to. Just because, you know, someone above said, put them on the shelf. They shouldn't just sit there and rot. That's not, no. fair. that's not fair to the fugly fruits. Absolutely. Fugly people are going to be pissed. That, that's right. You know, we don't need, we don't need a fugly revolution. No, no, it's not fair to the fugly fruits. They need to get I, recognized. They need to get eaten. They need to get appreciated. They need a cocktail recipe. You know, I mean, come on, there's a plethora of things that we could do with these things. I, I don't, I don't disagree. And I love the premise of it. And I love your passion for it because I think to your point, you know, in this country, I'll give you a statistic that'll blow you away. In this country, food waste is equivalent of every single American, large and small, old and young, whatever, throwing away 650 small to medium sized apples each. Each. I, I believe it. I absolutely. That's 330 million plus times 650. You can't even do that on your phone. You have to turn your phone sideways to get the number. It's <laughs> astronomical. So your point's really valid. And the thing is, is that you're promoting commodities and items that quite frankly are family friendly, kid friendly, you know, and good sources of all kinds of antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, cooking options. And so I just commend what you guys are doing. Obviously go to the website um, to find out more information about what they are, how to get in contact, obviously all that kind of stuff, because it lives there. And, you know, I, I encourage people to get on board and uh, let's make fruit fugly. <laughs> That's right. I'm Let's go. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure how to close that to comment That's out. Okay. But I just figured you really can't go wrong by saying fugly. Or right? fuck there's fugly. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. So one of the things that I I, I got to come back to is we kind of wind down hanging out a little bit today, and I think is so powerful is I know that the you know the inspiration that you get from the you know Hawaiian culture um translates you know, into volcano and what you do, but, you know, and we've talked about it a little bit, but it, I think it's different when you talk about it from a perception of inspiration, right? I mean, and I think that that's such a key word and that's what I want to focus on. How does that, you know, how does that inspire you? How do you know, cause I'm always a bigger believer in talking about inspiration, saying hello to people, loving people. It's so important. so powerful. Talk to me a little bit about the inspiration that you take from Hawaiian culture. It's, again, inspiration is the aloha spirit, how I treat people in business. Look, the bottom line is, I'm just like my dad. I am no bullshit. <laughs> it's I agree. Straight, straight up. If I'm going to tell you I'm going to do something, that means I'm going to do it. If I'm gonna, If I'm going to tell you I can't do something, that means I can't do it. I'm not going to give you lip service just because I want your business. That doesn't matter to me. The relationships are what matters to me the loyalty is what matters to me treating people the right way is what, what matters to me respecting others is what matters to me that is those are the biggest takeaways for me personally and how i run this business and how i want to be with everybody yeah well i, I and thank you for sharing I, I, and and i like i said inspiration is a big thing it's something i talk about all the time like inspiring people i say it every time i end this broadcast hundred and however many 30 episodes deep, whatever it is. But, you know, inspiration comes in a lot of different ways. Just, just saying hello to your neighbor is mm -hmm. a source of inspiration in some way, somehow it may not really inspire you, but it might inspire them. And that's good karma, right? That's what we need. We need more of that. You know, again, we talk about what we need to be doing differently in our global community. We all live in and inspiring each other to be better right. and encouraging each other, you know, it goes a long way. And, you know, you exemplify that. And that's what I love about what you're doing at Volcano. It's what I love about where you're heading the passion that's involved, your team. Uh, it's fun to be around. It's a little addictive. You know, it really is. And then throw the fugly crap on top of it. I think that's just freaking brilliant. And it, oh, I get it. Fugly, fricking, fricking fugly. <laughs> I go. like that. 
Oh, that's pretty good for me. So tell me what's, what's next for Volcano? What's next for you? What's coming up in 2023 besides, you know, kicking ass and taking names? Uh, honestly, we're on a, a growth trajectory path. I, I'm super excited about the next six months, the, the next year. Um, I'm growing our, I should say, I'm expanding our grower base. Um, that's super important for our growth. Um, and also you know, with that expansion, again, it, it comes full circle, is that the way I'm going to treat the growers, you know, right. respect for the growers and respect for what they have and what they do and how much money and time and effort and, and blood, sweat and tears that they put into their business. You know, sometimes I feel that people don't, they don't necessarily appreciate it sometimes. And I want to get back to that. I want to, I want to let them know that Hey, you know what? I appreciate you, you know, busting your ass out there for the past, you know, month and a half, you know, in the rains and this. And I mean, I just, I just don't think people realize how much work goes into that end of the business. There's a ton, you know, yeah. and you know, people just see the dollars. Yes, of course, everybody sees the dollars, but sometimes at the end of the day, it's not all about just the dollars. It's all, it, it's about dollars and how you treat people. I mean, that's just, that's where I'm at. I'm excited. I'm excited for the growth this next year and yeah. where we're going and our new network of, of, of growers that we are going to be working with and, you know, different retailers and things. I, I'm just, I'm super excited to, to work with different people and just, you know, bring people together and, and, and just supply people with good, good produce and customer service. I mean, I mean, that's all. It is what it is, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I'm still going to be running the business and those are just, you know, common practices, but the, the bottom line is it's all about how I'm treating people from growers to, you know, uh, retailers and, yeah. to my employees, to my family, to, to any, to anybody. That's just who I am and what I want to emulate to everyone. That's I, I love that. And I love what you say about the growers, right? I, I love that the fact that you've got this, this, as we've covered, we've talked and we built this, the, this story up about the inspiration the islands bring to you, right? What you learned as a kid, what that spirit is, and that that's something that's a part of your conversation. It's a completely different approach than a lot of people have out there. It's complete, it's fresh, it's exciting, uh, it's infectious to be around. Um, you know, I know you've got some exciting things coming, which, you know, we'll, we'll let that We'll let that roll out when it's ready to roll out and keep people on their edge a little bit. But I'm proud of you. I really am. I, 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 you inspire me. You uplift me every time we get on the phone and bullshit with each other. I'm, I look forward to it. I really, honestly, I do. And, and, and it's just, it's great to hear. Um, it's just great to hear where your heart lies. It's great because I, because I get it on the phone calls, right? People, people are going to have to call you and introduce themselves and do, you know, get to know you a little bit, but. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a worthy part of my day when we cross paths. So I, I just wanted to share that with you and tell you that, you know, you impact me, you inspire me. So I can't wait to see, I, I'll stop now, stop now, but you know, I, and I'm excited to see what you guys are going to do. And so, you know, come back, keep us informed. You're welcome to come back anytime and hang out with me. You know that. And of course, you know how to call me and text me and all that other good stuff. What you do. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have you, uh, uh, to be on and, and just to be here and just to kind of share your story. So keep it going. Thank you. Keep it fugly. I will keep it fugly. And aloha. <laughs> aloha and, and Mela Kalikimaka. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Back hey. to you. Thank you. Now, I'm going to get the Santa hat off here pretty quick because it's about 5,000 degrees under here and I'm losing my hair. <laughs> I'm, I don't need to burn my hair off. I'm losing it on its own. So I don't need to speed up the process. <laughs> but I appreciate you being here and hanging out with us. Thank you, Todd. Everybody, go inspire somebody. Hopefully, Tony inspired you a little bit. Get that spirit in your heart. Find something that makes you passionate and stick to it and share with other people, right? It's how we're going to uplift this community we're all in, right? Remember, we're in a global community, not just a neighborhood. And I think it's really important to remember that. So I love what it's about. I love the spirit. Go check out Volcano Produce. Go see what they're doing. They're doing some big lift. They got some fugly stuff out there, too, which is even more fun. Thank you for listening. Thanks for being a part of it. Don't forget, check us out on social media, TLC underscore conversations. You know why we're there? Because I'm there because I'm a Kardashian at heart. And that's why I love social media. So check us out. Be a part of it. Let's rock and roll. Let's make things happen. Let's keep these conversations going. Happy holidays, everybody. Go give somebody a hug today. Go inspire. We appreciate you. Take care. Aloha. <laughs>